Hi, welcome to What's Cooking with Rochelle. Today we're making an Italian classic chicken cacciatore with a slight twist as usual. So uh, to get started with chicken cacciatore, it is generally made with chicken thighs. We're gonna make it with chicken breast today, just a little healthier. Um, so first thing that we're gonna do is get our heavy skillet up to a medium temperature. Okay, so we'll get that heated up. Um, we are gonna sear the chicken first, but before we sear it, obviously we need to clean it up a little. So I am gonna make it with three chicken breasts. These are large chicken breasts, as you can see. Now, usually, you know, I, uh, throw away the pieces and parts, but actually for this recipe, um, we can use them. Um, we're gonna take them out once we get done searing, but it'll add flavor. And um, when you get your chicken breast, we are not gonna pound it, but I am going to cut it into, not bite-sized pieces, but chunks, shall we say. So about like that. And no rhyme or reason. Um, we're just going to be uh, separating it so that when we're serving it, it'll be a little easier to serve. All right, we got one down. Let's get the next one done. All right. Okay, so now that we have that done, we're gonna add some oil to our uh, skillet and see if it gets shimmery and ready to go. It's not quite hot enough. We're gonna give it a minute just to heat up a little bit more. While we're waiting on that, we can go ahead and get started with the rest of everything. So behind me, I have a pot of water, just regular water that is heating up to a boil. Um, what I'm gonna be doing with our Roma tomatoes is putting an X in the butt. That's the bottom and the top. Okay. We're gonna do that for each of these. I have, uh, how many did I grab? One, two, three, four, five, six of these. And these are pretty big ones. Um, if yours are regular size, you might wanna use eight. We have about six ounces of white mushrooms. This is a button mushroom. We're just gonna chop them in pretty good sized chunks, if you can see that. And uh, if you don't like mushrooms at all, you could omit the mushrooms. If you love them, double it. Okay, so once again, put our chopped mushrooms back in here. Sliced, I should say, not chopped. Um, we have one carrot. And I have already peeled this carrot and I'm just gonna give it a quick chop to chop it into smaller chunks. And then we are actually going to chop this finely dice. that again in a second. Okay, 
So that was one large carrot chopped up that was peeled first. And then we are going to use, uh, besides chicken, the main ingredient in chicken cacciatore is peppers. Uh, today we are using yellow, orange, and red. Um, again, if there's a specific type of pepper you like better than another, feel free to use that one and only that one or experiment with using all of them. And unlike uh, the carrot, we are going to leave this pretty big chunks. Again, because with the chunks of chicken, we want a chunk of pepper. And um, so we are going to slice these. And it's up to you if you use a whole one of each. I think I'm going to use like a half to two thirds of each one. Let's check our oil. It's definitely hot enough now. So let's get our chicken in there to start searing. Okay, now while our chicken is in there searing, we are going to put a generous layer of salt and pepper on top of that on both sides. So we're searing one side, salt and peppering it. When you flip it over, salt and pepper that side as well. Okay, so that's probably enough yellow. We'll put the rest of that over there. Let's get our beautiful red one. Now peppers all have unique taste profiles. If you didn't know that, it besides the color, um, they do vary in sweetness. And um, so it's kind of a personal preference, but if you've never tried some of the other colors, Definitely try them and see. You might really find out you love a different color as well. And I think what I'm going to do this time is these long pieces, I'm just going to give them one chop down the middle. Okay. So kind of organize these ones. Excellent. Um, if you don't have a sharp knife, a, a serrated knife is definitely the easiest to chop uh, peppers with. And so that we don't run out of room, that's what this lovely bowl is here for. Let's continue with our beautiful big orange one. This one's pretty big, so I'm definitely only going to use half of this guy. All together, we're probably going to get about uh, three cups, three to four cups of peppers. Okay. A couple more things for us to chop over. 
um, we have parsley and we need two tablespoons of fresh parsley. Again, if you don't have fresh, you would have two teaspoons instead, but we're needing two tablespoons. And you're gonna want a little more to garnish as well at the very end. And this is just a rough chop. It's going in our sauce that we're making. Okay. And last but not least, we have some onion. Uh, they had little tiny onions at the store last time I went, so um, one medium-sized onion is what you want, so I'm chopping uh, two little guys here. Let's go check our chicken and see if we need to flip that as well, okay? Okay, back to onions. Uh, the reason that um, we're not cooking the chicken is because it's actually gonna cook the rest of the way in the sauce. We're just trying to get some of the juices out of it to cook all the vegetables in, okay? And um, so you can see that those two small onions made about two cups uh, together. A uh, cup and a half to two cups is what you're looking for. And let's go ahead and get our chicken out of the skillet and so we can get start cooking our vegetables. Okay, so this leftover stuff is what you're definitely looking for. Um, that's gonna add flavor. We're gonna add just a little bit more oil. And we are gonna start with the onions. So go ahead and drop those in there. Okay, and we are gonna let these caramelize down for about three to five minutes, depending on the temperature of your skillet. Once we see them starting to brown, um, we are going to add the rest of our vegetables for a few minutes and reduce them with some wine. Okay, so while the onions are caramelizing, we are going to go ahead and blanch our tomatoes to peel them. So the water that I had on the skillet is, or the stove is hot. Um, you actually need it to be pretty hot to be able to do this. The reason we put the X's is once we put them in the water, the water is going to seep in just enough so that we can peel them. Now, this is a step that you definitely don't have to do, but if you are using fresh tomatoes like we are, if you've ever had a bite with a giant chunk of skin in it and you don't like that, uh, this is what will solve that problem for you. 
Okay, so go ahead and just put a couple in and they have to sit for a minute or two and then you'll see that they'll start to peel. So we're gonna leave those in there just like that. Okay, to the onions we are adding the carrots and the mushrooms. and the peppers. And we are going to let this cook for about five minutes to just reduce and um, caramelize a little bit more. And then we'll add our wine to reduce. All right, so the first ones are done. I'm gonna show you what I mean. See how it's peeling away a little bit? We're gonna put them in the ice bath. The ice bath is gonna do two things. It's gonna make it so that skin peels off easier and so that we don't burn our hands. <laughs> so putting the last batch in there, because we did six of these guys. And again, if you have the smaller ones, then, um, you know, it, you could do eight tomatoes. So while these guys are sitting, getting their skins peeled, uh, loosened, I should say, we're going to peel these guys. Um, so you could see how it's lifted. You simply just grab it and pull it down. And that's the thing that when you take a bite and you don't like. It's the skin, just like the skin on lots of other things. So uh, this is a nice step if you have the time to do. It's certainly, like I said, not a requirement, um, but it does, does add a nice layer there. When you're making homemade tomato sauce, this is definitely something that if you do, you'll notice it too also seems so much nicer. So one peeled, let's get the next guy. Oh, that guy came off in just like one little swoop. That guy was definitely a lot easier, huh? And just like anything, some are easier than others, right? Okay, so the peppers, onions, carrot, that's been cooking with the mushrooms and the skillet. We're going to add just shy of two cups of wine to that, and we're going to let it reduce down to about half of the volume. Uh, you can use whatever wine you want. If you wanted to use white, you could, but I recommend a red. It can be Merlot, Cabernet, Pinot, whatever you prefer. Okay, now while our wine is reducing, now that our potato or tomatoes are peeled, um, we are going to go ahead and dice these up a little bit. Just a rough chop um, because we want some hardiness to it. Um, I do have one can, which is a uh, 12 ounce can of stewed tomatoes, diced stewed, um, and those will fall apart as it's cooking. These ones will stay and add a little chunk, just like the peppers and the mushrooms. Okay, so we're only gonna do a couple at a time and put them in our bowl until we're ready. So um, what I'm gonna do is cut them in about fours, just like so. So they're about like that. You're not looking to make them um, teeny tiny because again, they will reduce when they are cooking. This guy's a little chunkier. Okay, 
Okay, grab two more. I'm gonna finish all six of these out and then I'll see you back here in a minute. Okay, so the wine has reduced by half. So now we're gonna add the rest of our ingredients, cover it, put the chicken back in, cover it, and then just let it go. So here are our six aroma tomatoes. We have uh, two generous tablespoons of a tomato paste. And then the one can of stewed tomatoes. We have two tablespoons of chopped fresh parsley. And then we have a teaspoon of oregano, two teaspoons of basil, and one teaspoon of red peppers, red pepper flakes. Okay, let me give this a stir. We are adding in our chicken and any juices that came about. From them resting. Okay, you're gonna cover it and then turn it down to uh, a low, not a simmer, but a low and cook it for at least an hour. Okay, so look how wonderful this looks. The chicken is cooked. Our sauce has been reducing. Those tomatoes are still whole enough that uh, you can see them. And uh, we're going to scoop up some here. Let's get some mushrooms and chicken and make sure we get some wonderful peppers. Excellent. All right. Ah, oh, I wish you guys could smell this. Oh, it smells like heaven. So I, so I can get everything in a bite, I'm gonna take the chicken and uh, get myself a chunk of chicken to eat with some tomato and pepper. Mm. That is good. Has a really nice kick. If you don't like it that spicy, cut the red pepper flakes down. And if you like it more, jack it up even. Thank you for watching What's Cooking with Rochelle. If you like this Italian dish, try one of my other Italian dishes on my YouTube channel. And if you really enjoyed it, please subscribe. And thank you for watching. Bye for now. Welcome to What's Cooking with Rochelle. Today we're gonna to make chicken parmesan. You can make chicken parmesan 
a lot longer, but we're gonna make it pretty fast. You're gonna see. So I'm gonna do two chicken breasts today and uh, we've got all the other accoutrements out. Before we get started in pounding our chicken breasts out, we're gonna get everything else organized. So I've got some flour here that I'm gonna dredge the chicken in. To this flour, I am gonna add a teaspoon of salt and a teaspoon of pepper, okay? Sorry guys. And just give that a quick stir. Okay, now you can see we've got lots of other herbs for seasonings. And we are gonna add those to our breadcrumbs. To the breadcrumbs, we are adding traditional Italian spices. If you wanna do a different take on it, you could, but this is very traditional. So we are adding oregano and thyme and basil. Now those are all dried spices for in this. And we are also gonna add, um, this is a mixture, it's a little bit of spice. Um, I like in my breadcrumbs just a little spice. So that spice mixture is uh, chili powder, paprika, salt. Okay, got all that mixed up. Um, in the center bowl here, we are going to have our dredge, which is an egg. Get that cleaned off of me. And you're gonna add just a little bit of water to that. Um, that'll make it easier to stick. Now we're gonna do one more thing before we actually just start the chicken which of course is the, now that we've got all this stuff done. And I have these lined up this way on purpose because we're gonna go from flour to egg to breadcrumbs. Okay guys? Okay, so we need to turn on our skillet because it does need to be hot. I have some olive oil in a skillet. Okay, one more thing. Um, we're gonna add a little bit of grated Parmesan to the breadcrumbs. Again, this is just gonna add a little bit more flavor to them. Um, we are going to be making a traditional chicken parm, which is gonna have the melted mozzarella cheese and tomato sauce on top, but this is just our seasonings. And like always, these breadcrumbs were just uh, old bread that I had that I just grated up. You can buy them in the store, super easy. Okay, so we got two chicken breasts and these are just the ones they sell at the store. These are not hand trimmed, right? So these are the, the less expensive ones and you can see they've left a little stuff here and here. And so we're gonna get rid of that. So take your knife and cut. That stuff off and it doesn't take you but a few minutes as you'll see to get all that stuff out of there now this joint right here um, is where it moves and so it's a little bit um, tougher so I always try to take that out Now, if you didn't want to have to do this, you didn't have to, you can absolutely make it without doing this. I just like to get rid of that. So you can see we've got a nice piece here now, except for this little edge that they didn't cut off. So again, you just stick your knife in, pull it down, scrape it out. Okay, one down, one to go. We're gonna do the same thing here with this one. You can see it needs this piece here taken off first. Okay. Then we're gonna cut out that one and this one's even worse, you could see. A 
If you ever take a bite of something in a restaurant or whatever and it you have like a chunk, that's that's what that was. They just didn't do that. Okay, let's check it on the edge and sure enough, it does have a little bit here. Not quite as bad as the other one. That we're going to get rid of. All right, so our chicken is ready to pound. Now, when you're pounding the chicken, you can see how this side is smooth. It's the outside, this is the inside. You want to put them so that the smooth side is up. Then, with your pounder, now if you don't have this, you could use whatever is heavy. You want to beat it to make it about the same thickness. Now you can um, obviously use a piece of plastic if you're worried about um, But we're not making it like super thin, so you should be good to go. And you can see how those two breasts got quite a bit bigger, right? And I see one little thing here I want to cut off. Sorry I missed that, guys. Okay, so um, these are bigger than what we're going to want to serve for one person. So let's go ahead and cut them in portion sizes. So I'm going to cut this guy in half, right? So we've got one here and one here. And then let's cut this guy into more because it was quite big. So you see out of that, I actually have enough here for five people. And I'm going to get this in front of me. So we can go ahead and do this part and put it in our oil. So take one of your breasts, put it in the flour, coat it evenly, shake off any excess, then you're going to dredge it in the egg, just like so. Okay, drip off the extra and put it in the bread crumbs. Okay, let's get another guy going. Again, put it in the bread crumb or the flour. Then to our egg wash. And we're going to get this guy out of here and put this guy in the oil. So I hope you heard that sound. That's the sound you want to hear. You definitely want to make sure that it's hot. The hotter the oil, within reason, means that it will cook quickly and um, the oil won't absorb as much into the chicken, which is obviously what you should prefer. Okay, so we got another guy done here. Put that little guy over there. Okay, three more to go into the flour. Now I'm not timing myself. I guess I should one of these days and see how long it really does take because it doesn't take that long. And you can see for one egg that um, it does do two breasts. We had about two cups of breadcrumbs and maybe a half a cup of flour. Okay, and this guy's ready. All right. Now, um, 
That is all that's going to fit in the skillet that I have is three of the pieces. But I'm going to go ahead and get these, the brother two, um, ready to go and into the oil as soon as those are out. Okay? Okay, so we're going to get these turned over. You can see they're nice and crispy on the outside. And um, that was, I don't know, maybe three minutes on each side, something like that. We're going to put them over here to drain while we cook the other two. And then I'm going to show you a quick trip about how just to broil them to melt the cheese. And then you don't have to spend that extra 20 minutes baking them. Okay, I'm going to heat up some more oil to cook the other two breasts. And uh, since our pan is already hot, it's not going to take but just, you know, 30 seconds or so for the oil to get hot. And remember that sizzle sound is the sound you know that the oil's at the right temperature. If you ever see smoking or um, smell a smell like a burnt smell, uh, that means your oil is too hot, okay? So those are going to need just a couple more minutes. I'm going to go ahead and get our sauce ready and cheese and show you how we're going to broil it super fast. All right, our chicken is done and we need two other ingredients to make traditional chicken parmesan. And that of course is tomato sauce and mozzarella cheese. Now I'm using a grated mozzarella. You can definitely use sliced mozzarella if you'd rather. You could use provolone or another cheese if you'd like instead. Um, but what we're simply going to do is I'm just going to make a couple of them to show you. We're going to take two of them, put them on a mat. Okay. You're going to take a little bit of uh, tomato sauce on the top. Now you don't want to smother it, but you do want to have tomato sauce on it. So I would say probably like a 70% of it's covered, as you can see there. Okay. And then, of course, we're going to take the mozzarella cheese and lather that on it. Perfect. And we are going to broil these in the oven, not bake them broil them. In just a couple of minutes, chicken parmesan is done. Start to finish, 20 minutes. Okay, here we go. You're going to want to put them on the top shelf. Put your oven light on so you can see and uh, it should only be, like I said, three to five minutes, depending on how hot your oven gets. And then we're gonna eat, yay! All right, they are done, yay! Mmm. Look at that wonderfulness. Let's go ahead and get one of these bad boys here on my plate for me to enjoy. Yummy, yummy. Now I've got some fresh basil, which obviously is always good. If you don't have it, you could add a little bit of dried or nothing at all. Get rid of this 
guy. All right, now for the best part, that's the eating. Let me show you. I'm gonna cut through the middle so you can just see. It is wonderful, it is cooked, it is juicy, and still crispy. All right, let's get some sauce and cheese. Mm, mm, mm. Who doesn't love chicken parmesan? Mm. That is delicious. Well, thanks again for watching What's Cooking with Rochelle. Bye for now. Welcome to What's Cooking with Rochelle, and today we are making chicken pot pie. Mmm, yummy! Um, so you can make this a uh, healthier version. This is like the legit taste delicious version. And I'll give you suggestions for substitutions if you want to make it a vegan or you just want to make it non-dairy, okay? So what we're going to do is we're going to do two things to get started. We're going to turn our oven on and we're going to put it at 375 degrees. And I'm going to turn my skillet on to get that heated up a little bit and then I'll be right back. Okay, so we got all that going. So on our cooking board here, what we're going to start with is our celery, carrots, and onion. And then we're going to put those in that skillet with butter. So here I have half a stick, which is four tablespoons of butter. So let me get that in there to get melted. And I'm gonna start with my onion. So I have a white onion. You could use a yellow onion. I don't know if for this I would use a red onion. Um, we are using about a medium size total. So I used a little bit of this the other day, but I think there's enough left. Okay, so you just wanna chop it. So we're gonna make some slices and then Chop our slices. If you guys have watched me before, which hopefully you have, you know I've got all kinds of choppers and things, but I'm showing you, you can do this 100% yourself without really any equipment except a knife and a cutting board. So today we're going to, let me get this out of the way, um, be doing it pretty much old school. Once I get this half chopped, I'm going to dump it in the skillet and then chop the other half. So um, if you wanted to make it vegan, obviously you're not going to use butter. You could use coconut oil. Uh, you could use olive oil to saute the vegetables in so whatever works best for you you could make it um, with an alternative meat um, they make plenty of um, options these days when you see me throwing stuff out I'm throwing out the the skin part. Okay, so that part there looks pretty good. Let's go ahead and get this in our butter. And chop the other half. 
Okay, so we got all our onion chopped. We're gonna go ahead and get our celery in there next. I'm just gonna take the butts off, which is just the little part that's kind of, and to make it easier, we're going to chop them up like that and then just simply give it a quick So let's get the celery in there with the onions. And let me give that just a quick little stir. Okay, on to our carrots. Now I've already um, taken the outside of the carrots off and we are going to just do the same thing. Just make some pretty circles. Now you could leave them as circles, but um, for a pot pie that's probably going to be too big of a bite. So we're actually going to chop those up a little bit, and I'll show you here in a second. Run away, carrots. If you wanted to make them beautiful, I'll show you here with what we have left, what you could do to make them all the uniform size. Obviously you could use um, a machine setting on your food processor, but if you didn't have a food processor, how you could do it. Okay, let me get these in the butter. Okay, so what you would want to do, if you wanted them to all be unique, uniform, you cut it in half, cut that in half, and voila, you could see now we have unique same size pieces. I'll do it again for you. So you take the two. And there you go. So we'll chop up the rest of this carrot here. That one's pretty big. Alrighty. We're gonna add a half a cup of frozen peas. Okay, so on to the chicken. So I have two chicken breasts here that I cooked in water with a little bit of onion, celery, salt, and peppercorns. If you don't wanna cook your own, you don't have to. You can go to the store in the deli department how they have the rotisserie chickens, you could get one of those. They also have diced chicken that's already cooked in the frozen section of the grocery store. So you decide what makes the most sense for you. Um, but we are just going to take this and make some slices and then dice it. Again, we have to make this so it's like bite-sized pieces because it's in the pie. Now you could shred it if you wanted, but you can see how it's done that pretty much on its own here by doing what we did. This one needs cut again. Okay. 
that was our oven letting us know it's ready. Now you do want to um, have your oven hot at temperature for at least 10-15 minutes prior to getting it in there and that way it'll cook faster. Okay, so we're going to play switcheroo here. Put the chicken that's already diced into the bowl. Now I'm using a deep dish nine inch pie crust uh, pie bowl. And so if you have one that's not as deep, you're probably not going to need quite as much of everything. So maybe two things of celery, two carrots, a little bit less onion, maybe only one chicken breast, depending on how big they were. These were kind of big, so we might have more chicken here than we need. But it won't go to waste. We'll use it for something else. going to set this chicken aside. Okay, so we're ready to make the crust. We've got that sauteing. We're cooking it a little bit more than maybe you might think on the stove to make the cooking time in the oven less. So basically when it goes in the oven, the inside part's going to be ready and we're just going to be making to that the crust is going to be cooking. Okay, so we need a bowl. I have two and a half cups of flour, again, because I have a deep dish. Um, if you have a regular one, you only need two cups of flour. So for each cup of flour, you need six tablespoons of shortening. So I have a total of 15 here, again, because I have two and a half cups. And then to this, we have five tablespoons of water. Now, sometimes you need to add a little bit more. Just we're going to play it by ear and see how it goes. So this is the fun part. You get to get in there and get dirty. Now, if you wanted to do a quick, easy way, obviously, you could buy a pre-made crust um, from the store and use that instead. Um, if you didn't want to use a vegetable shortening, you absolutely could use a, a solid coconut oil, if, again, if you wanted to do vegan. Um, you could also use butter, um, but... We are using shortening, a vegetable shortening. Okay, so you can see this is starting to come together. All right, we are almost there, guys. Get all this back in the bowl. this out here. I'm just going to get it together. You don't want to make it too overworked. <clears throat> okay. Now break it up into two balls. Why two balls you say? Because we need a bottom crust and a top crust. So and they do not have to be exact in size at all. 
but you can see how I am making it into a round ball. And this is so that when you roll it out, it, it is a little bit more even. We're going to sprinkle just a little bit of flour. Put one of the balls in the center. Push it out and then turn it over. We're doing this to get the flour underneath it all. And before I get started, I'm going to go check on the stove. Okay, that's coming along nicely. To that, I am going to add two cups of chicken stock. And we're going to let that come back up to a boil, cook it, and then we're going to add the rest of the ingredients. So, as you know, we've made crusts on this show before. If you haven't checked out one of the other recipes, I've got quite a few with crusts that you can look at. Um, I do have some alternative crusts, although for this type of recipe, I would stick to a pretty basic crust. Um, if you didn't want to use a white flour, you could use um, a, a substitute for enriched white flour. And remember, we pull down from the center. And because we're going to be taking it off, doesn't have to be an exact. Now I can tell the dough is just a hair too dry, that's why it's cracking, but it's all good. That's why it's doing that. So it's almost thin enough, I can see the circle underneath. So let's go ahead and get our dish. Remember, we've done this before. You grab one end. I'm right-handed, so I'm grabbing from this end. You simply just roll it up on your rolling pin, just like so. Grab your dish before you pick it up. Pick it up and just put it on the edge and unroll it. Then you lift the edge and set it down inside. Okay. Then you're just going to pat it down. Make sure we're all good there. This piece here is trying to fall. And then we're going to roll out the bottom. I'm going to take just this little extras off because we definitely don't need that all the way out there. Okay, so we got our top crust rolled out. I'm going to leave it like this for now because we need to finish what's going on over on the stove. Okay, so I have a cup of chicken stock and I've got flour, all-purpose flour. Um, you could also use uh, cornstarch. You want a thickener, okay? So you could see how that thickened that right up. Now, um, I did have the stock hot. It will be easier to combine when that is so. We add this into the pot. And now it's time to add the chicken in there. We're going to add a half a cup of heavy cream and we're going to balance it with salt and pepper.
Mm. That's good. Sorry you don't get to eat it. Yet, yeah, anyway. All right. Um, I have some fresh parsley here. This is probably about a third of a cup to a half a cup. And I'm just going to tear it into it. You could dice it. You don't have to use fresh. You could use dried as well. Okay, so it is ready to go in the pan. Now before I do that, I'm going to roll this one up to get it out of the way. So again, you grab, lift your mat. Now if you're using parchment paper because you don't have a mat, just do the exact same thing. Let's do this. This is heavy, guys, so I'm going to get a scooper. So you can see how it really thickened up. Um, if you think it's too thick, you can add more stock or um, even just water. You could also add more milk. Uh, like I said, I've made it many times without any dairy at all. We're getting it all in there, I think, maybe. We'll see. Let's see. Can get it. Let's see that is an awesome full pie, huh, guys? Okay. Get rid of this. We are simply going to top it. stuck over there and then you're going to pinch it with your thumb remember against your finger now if you have a they make this cute little tool that you can run around the edges and it pinches it for you but if you want to get your frustrations out give it a pinch yourself Okay, and you can see that rest of that is just going to fall right off, just like so. And we are almost ready to go in the oven. I want to just cut a quick hole in the top. Just a couple of vents. Okay, we're going to put this in our preheated oven. That's at 375 degrees. Depending on how much you pre-cooked it determines how long it's going to have to take in here. If you didn't pre-cook your vegetables, it could take an hour. The way that we've made it, it should take about a half an hour. So I am going to clean up the rest of this mess and I will see you back here in a half an hour. chicken pot pie. Yummy, yummy in my tummy. All right, let's get a little bit of everything. Mm. Mm. This is delicious. I know I'm prejudiced, but this is really good. Light flaky crust, soft moist chicken, cooked carrots, delicious. Thanks for watching Chicken Pot Pie with What's Cooking with Rochelle. 
If you like this recipe, check out some of the others. I think you'll like them as well. And if you get a chance, please subscribe. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.